Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over some Network Plus practice questions. These are from CompTIA Cert Master Learn, and I hope this is super helpful to you and you guys can pack your, pass your Network Plus exam just like I did. Okay, so today we're going to go through lesson three, deploying Ethernet switching. Practice category, 15 questions. A networking administrator is trying to power off a Cisco switch, but it is not working. The administrator needs to be in which mode to perform this task? Global configuration, user, auto negotiate, or enable. I'm going to go with auto uh, global configuration. It was enable. Privileged exec mode allows the user to reboot or shut down the appliance and to backup and restore the system configuration. So global configuration is more like the generic configuration menu. Enable is kind of like an escalated privileged version of the configuration menu. So it makes sense that to power off the switch, you would need to be in a privileged uh, mode, which is called enable. Next question. A systems administrator is setting up servers with standard network interface cards. Which of the following do most standard NICs support? Select all that apply. Standard network interface cards, I would think would just be fast ethernet and gigabit ethernet. I don't know if standard network interface cards for servers are different, but let's see. Look at that. It is fast ethernet and gig gigabit ethernet would be supported as a standard. 10 gigabit ethernet and 40 gigabit ethernet are quite a bit faster and they require um, higher, higher categories of cabling as well. We can see here it says a sys admin would have to provision for a different kind of adapter for a 10 gigabit ethernet fiber link. Adapters that support 10 gigabit ethernet come at a considerable price premium over basic gigabit models. A systems administrator needs to combine multiple one gigabit per second connections to be able to support two gigabits per second connections. What should the administrator set up? CAM table, NIC teaming, port security configuration, or auto MDI MDIX? Okay, this one, what do you guys think it is? Hmm? Uh... This one is NIC teaming. I just know that. CAM table is related to MAC addresses. Port security configuration is related to port security. Auto MDI, MDIX is related to uh, speed negotiation, I believe. So NIC teaming is the correct answer. Um, port aggregation or NIC teaming combines two or more separated cable links into a single logical channel. From the host end, this is known as NIC teaming. So you can combine two one gigabit per second connections and make it into one two gigabit per second connection. Next question. A server administrator needs to allow a server to instruct the switch to pause traffic temporarily to avoid overwhelming its buffer and causing it to drop frames. What should the server administrator set up? Just based off of looking at these, I can, uh, it, it's flow control. Jumbo frames um, are frames that are bigger than the standard size, which is something like 14, 1400 something bytes or something. Uh, port mirroring is mirroring traffic from one port to another. Port aggregation is what was in the previous question. So flow control, it just sounds right. And it's flow control. IEEE 802.3x flow control allows a server to instruct the switch to pause traffic temporarily to avoid overwhelming its buffer and causing it to drop frame. Question number five, I think. A cable operator needs to transition from one cable type to another. Which of the following would best help? An MDI, a repeater, a hub, or a media converter? Media converter. Next question. A network technician is setting up a connection between switches, but it is not establishing a connection. Which of the following would be the most likely cause for it to not work? A connection between switches, okay. Dual MDIX ports, uplink port, crossover cables, or auto negotiation. We can eliminate auto negotiation because that would help them communicate. Crossover cables are irrelevant because the switches are most likely smart enough to figure out what kind of cable is being used and make the connection work anyways. Uplink port sounds possible. Dual MDIX ports also sounds unlikely because I believe that's also auto-negotiated in modern switches. So I'm gonna go with uplink port. I'm not 
super confident, but uh, it was A. Okay. When a switch needs to connect to another switch, communications would fail if both interfaces use media-dependent interface crossover. Yeah, here, here, you see, nowadays, network administrators configure most switch interfaces to use auto MDI, MDIX by default. This means that the switch senses the configuration of the connected device and cable wiring and ensures that an MDI uplink to an MDIX port gets configured. But this question clearly stated that it was two MDIX ports, so that's why the answer should have been A. Anyways, let's move on. A network engineer is setting up MTU sizes to follow most Ether products. In normal conditions, what is the maximum size of the Ethernet frame, excluding the preamble? Okay, if we exclude the preamble, I believe it's 1500. 1518 also sounds familiar. I can't remember if that's with the preamble. I think it is. I'm going to go with B. It might be A. It was A. <laughs> The maximum size of an Ethernet frame is normally 15, 18 bytes, excluding the preamble. Um, the official IEEE 802.3 standard defines a two byte field. The size of the value payload by the payload can be normally between 46 and 200 bytes. Okay, so the payload is 1500 bytes. The frame, excluding the preamble, is 1518. Next question. A systems administrator is trying to troubleshoot frames over a large network medium and wants to set up the most optimal solution. Which of the following should the sysadmin use? Span port, active tap, passive tap, or IG. The active tap regenerates the signal strength on uh, frames coming to that port. The passive tap does not, I believe. Um, a span port was something a little bit higher level than an active port. I can't remember exactly. So with this, we'd want to get as much information as possible because we're, we're trying to get incorrect frames and broken frames and everything in between. So I, I understand the question conceptually. I just don't remember which answer matches. Uh, it's either span, I want to say, uh, it could be any of these three guys. I'm going to go with span port. No, I'm going to go with active tap. And it was active tap. All right. Active tap is a powered device that performs signal regeneration. Gigabit signaling over copper wire is too complex for a passive tap to monitor. Span mirror port refers to a sensor attached to a specially configured port on the switch that receives copies of frames. This method is not completely reliable. A passive tap is a box with ports for incoming and outgoing network cabling and an inductor or optical splitter that physically copies the signal from the cabling to a monitor port. Next question. A networking project manager needs switches that can connect together and operate as a group. Which of the following should the project manager use? Switches that can connect together and operate as a group. I'm going to go with modular because that word sounds like what this is saying. It was B. What? It was C. Stackable. Stackable. Oh, stackable. They can act like one switch. I remember. Stackable means that switches can connect together and operate as a group. The sysadmin can manage the switch stack as a single unit. So you literally can just put them all on top of each other and plug them into each other and they'll act like one switch. And logically what that means is that all of those switches will have one broadcast domain. Sorry, not one broadcast domain. Yes, one broadcast domain. They will have... Every port has its own collision domain, but if um, all of those switches are acting as one switch, they will share a broadcast domain. They will be on the same subnet. Next question. A network administrator is setting up connection points for multiple devices to connect. Which of the following cannot be configured? Bridge, switch, hub, or router? Obviously a router and a switch can be configured. A bridge can also be configured because it joins two different broadcast domains, I believe, or collision domains. Uh, a hub, it cannot be configured. It's old school. It just shoots out whatever it gets to all ports. So hubs have no configuration options. The technician connects the device to a power source and then connects the network cables for the hosts, becoming part of the network segment served by the hub. A network technician wants to upgrade the company's hub to isolate collision domains from each other and allow for gigabit ethernet. Which solution would help the, the technician to accomplish this? Upgrade the hub, isolate collision domains, that sounds like a switch to me. 
a bridge could sort of do this a little bit like it would create two collision domains instead of uh, out of out of one but a, a switch can create as many collision domains as ports that you have um, a router would not accomplish this it would connect the routers are for connecting two different networks um, so that would be uh, different broadcast domains um, a hub is trash basically so we're gonna go with a a is correct an ethernet layer to switch performs a similar function as a bridge but in a more granular way that's my new favorite word by the way granular s tier word and for many more ports than bridges support gigabit ethernet and ethernet 10 gigabit cannot be deployed without using switches next question a help desk operator is trying to identify the vendor for a piece of equipment what could the help desk operator check to determine the vendor the last six digits of a mac address the oui the ig bit of a mac address the fcs fcs stands for frame check sequence which has nothing to do with this i don't know what an ig bit is i forgot the last six digits of a MAC address tell us nothing, but the first six digits of a MAC address, I believe it's six, are, cons are um, called the OUI or the Organization Unique Identifier, something like that. <laughs> Organizational Unit Identifier. Anyway, this is the answer. It, it tells you uh, who the manufacturer is. The first six hex digits of a MAC address, also known as the Organizationally Unique Identifier, identifies the manufacturer of the adapter. Next question. A network technician has set up a link where the cable length exceeds the distance limitation and may not achieve the required speed or be unreliable. What should the network technician use in this case? Media converter, repeater, MDI, or hub? The answer in this case is repeater because it just simply regenerates that signal and passes it along down the wire. Next question. A network architect is assessing network performance. Which of the following is part of the CSMA CD protocol to identify collisions early? Select all that apply. A frame check sequence would help detect collisions because if the if the frame check sequence is is wrong, then it shows that your your frames are messed up, uh, out of order. The CRC I don't remember what it stands for, but I believe it has something to do with this, and I don't know about those two, so. I'm not sure about this one, to be honest. This is a difficulty level is difficult. So what do you guys think it is? What? <laughs> the preamble is for clock synchronization. And as part of the carrier sends multiple access with the collision detection protocol to identify collisions early. So preamble was one of the answers, correct? The start frame delimiter is also used for clock synchronization and it's part of the blah, blah, blah. Okay. The error checking field, blah, 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 cyclic redundancy check. Cyclic redundancy check, also known as the frame check sequence, there's no mechanism for retransmission if damage is detected, nor is the CRC completely accurate at detecting damage. So these two are garbage. They're not used for error collision checking at all. Next question. A network technician wants to upgrade the company's hub to avoid collisions. Which solution would help the technician accomplish this to the fullest extent? Okay, if you want to upgrade a hub to avoid collisions, I feel like we already had a question like this. The answer I believe would be to set it up as a switch. And that is correct. Basically, switches are awesome and you should always use a switch if you can. All right, that's all the questions I have. I hope you'll join me in the next video so you can learn more and study for your Network Plus. Bye. Real quick before I forget, I want to give a shout out to Google through Moyo who answered a question and I said I would give a shout out to anyone who answered a particular question on one of my videos. It was kind of like an Easter egg. Bye.